making a difference in the lives of other people is how I define living a purposeful life. You know, Adrian, I always say that inclusion is the gateway to independence. So if I can open up more doors of I like inclusion that. for people to uh, gain a personal and professional independence, buddy, that's what I'm all about. This is Your Purposeful Life, and I'm your host, Adrian Starks. I'm a speaker, podcaster, narrator, writer, and entrepreneur. On this podcast, we're taking a different approach to the understanding of purpose because it's not a one-size-fits-all. There will be a variety of guests expressing their purpose through the human mess we call the human journey. These conversations will guide you to a better awareness and understanding of your unique purpose in the daily life of mistakes, changes, and challenges in how to put that purpose into action, bringing you more experiences of success, fulfillment, and achievement on your terms. Let's go on this journey of purpose together. Welcome back, everyone, to Your Purposeful Life with your host, Adrian Starks. And it is here where we are changing the conversation around purpose. And we want to help you shape your purpose your way. Today, I would like to welcome our special guest, Kevin McShann, to the podcast and community. Kevin, how are you doing today, brother? Adrian, I'm fabulous, and I'm delighted to engage in conversation with you this afternoon. Thanks so much for having me on, buddy. You're very welcome, my friend, and I'm excited to have you on because today we're going to talk about not allowing a disability to define your limitation, in your words, okay? We're also going to talk about inclusion and equality for the disabled, and also what you're doing with your speaking and how you are actually empowering people with disabilities to not allow that to be their limitations, but to use that as a, a wheel and a vehicle for them to get further in life. So before we do that, Kevin, we're going to go into a little bit more here about the show. We'll talk about your bio, and then we'll go from there. So let's get back to the show here for a quick second here. I want to make sure all of our listeners go and to download this podcast onto your favorite podcast platform of choice by going to our website, yourpurposeful.life. And it is there where you can download it on any podcast platform of choice. You can listen to some episodes, follow us on social media, scroll down that page, and also join our community. There's a lot of great things that are coming up. And to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that notification bell with a purpose, like like you mean it, because we're going to start having some weekly episodes coming out, and all of our videos will be available on YouTube. Now, back to our special guest, Kevin McShan. This is going to be the man of the hour, and I'm excited to have him on. So Kevin has over 10 plus years of journalism experience with knowledge of how to make all forms of media attractive and compelling to viewers and readers. He has interviewed local TV personalities, athletes, coaches, to national writers, columnists, to radio personalities. One of his strongest core competencies as a journalist is having the ability to connect with people and asking them the questions which will entice them to show their personal side. And I like that. That's something Kevin and I have in common. Kevin is a disability and inclusion expert, sports reporter, and has plenty of experiences which anyone would find compelling. He was born with spastic quadriplegial cerebral palsy. However, he has refused to allow that disability to define his limitations in how he lives his life. Amen to that. He currently hosts his Let's Have This Conversation, his own podcast, a platform he created to have conversations with people from all walks of life. Currently, the platform has received over 200,000 lifetime views. Kevin is also a graduate of St. Clair College's Journalism, Print, and New Media program. Kevin has an extensive history of promoting employment equality for individuals with disabilities, most recently as the job developer and enhanced employer support facilitator with the YMCA of Windsor, Essex County. He also continues the effort of promoting inclusion for people with disabilities through his motivational speaking efforts. And I can go on and on and on about Kevin here, but Kevin, welcome to the show, my friend. Adrian, it's great to be here, and I hope that introduction that I can live up to the billing bunny. I look forward to having <laughs> a comprehensive and inclusive conversation this afternoon. I'm looking forward to my friend. And today's topic, as I mentioned earlier with our guests, we're going to talk about not allowing your disability to define your limitations. And as I said before in your bio, Kevin, that you do have um, spastic quadriplegial cerebral palsy, but that has not allowed you to stop 
in helping others and to be a massive voice here on the planet. For starters here, Kevin, where did you grow up? So I was born and raised in Windsor, Ontario, Canada, which is the city right across the river uh, from Detroit. But so I've, been, I've lived and worked in Windsor all of my life. Oh, wow. Windsor. Okay. So I've, I've been, so this is Ontario, Canada, correct? That's correct. Yeah. Yeah, so I see I I've been to Canada, but not that side of it. I've been I'm on the west part of Canada, so I live in Seattle, and I spend a lot of time in Vancouver, uh, Canada. Uh, so yeah, yeah, Seattle and Vancouver are on that far apart. And you're right, buddy, but you have to uh, come a little bit north and pay me a visit. Okay, uh, we we got to do that. We got to do that. Have a, have some coffee and talk it up. And, and like you said, let's have a conversation when I come there, brother. So you grew up in Ontario, Canada, and what was it like as a child for you growing up with this disability? And well, I'll, I'll ta- yeah, go ahead, sorry. No, that's okay. You know, I want to know what was it like growing up as a child with this disability? And did your parents encourage you at all? What was the conversation around that? Well, you, you know, I will uh, tell you very quickly, Adrian, I have an identical uh, twin brother, and, and, mm. and Keith and I were both born with of cerebral palsy, and Keith uh, grew out of his cerebral palsy when we were uh, four months old. But I uh, was told at nine years old after my last surgery uh, by the uh, by the doctor who uh, performed all of my surgeries that I wouldn't be able to walk without the assistance of uh, a walker, and uh, I wouldn't be able to get around without a wheelchair. But uh, uh, the way uh, my parents have o- always raised uh, all of their kids is never to let your limitations be your, your excuse not to make any progress in life. So I always tell people that I can either work for my circumstances or I, I can have my circumstances work for me. And I try to make my circumstances work for me because, you know, I look at uh, having uh, excuses and and creating barriers as an artificial barrier to progress. So I try to eliminate those as best I can. I love that. And your parents were so right at telling you and your brother that because it's important for us to understand that our limitations don't define us. We define what we want to define in our lives. And it reminds me, Kevin, I'm just going to go ahead and say this. We need to start changing our conversation around the people who are who have disabilities. There's a lot of people who have disabilities and they come in different forms and fashions. And I think that when we think of a disabled person, the first thing social conditioning wise that many of us or a lot of people, they won't say this, they've been taught is, oh, poor them. Or, you know, bless their heart. You know how the old people would say it or the elderly people would say, bless their heart, bless their soul. And this is something that is a compassion factor. But here's the thing that I want us to change today as people. Compassion is great. But looking at someone that may function differently from you because in the physical sense does not mean that you have to feel sorry for them. Be encouraged by them. Be inspired by them. Like what you're doing today. I'm inspired by you, Kevin. I'm inspired by the fact that you've taken this and you're saying, hey, I'm rolling with it. I'm going to teach people things because that's what we have to do. We have to start looking at we all function differently and we have to start respecting ourselves in in different forms and fashions. Kevin, there's a person that really inspired me. Her name was Helen Keller, great literary author. And she was stricken with a disease at the age of five that left her both deaf and blind. Now, she could have easily given up on life and said, I'm done, I'm through, but she didn't. She worked through it. She had a person, she had coaches, she had mentors, she had a great supporting family, and she ended up being one of the greatest literary authors of all time. And why is that? Because she didn't let that limitation define her. And if we also look at presently, a couple of people that I know in the industry that have have been absolutely phenomenal, people that I've not met in person, but I've read about them is Richard Branson. He has a form of dyslexia. But yet he's one of the greatest entrepreneur moguls out there. And also another person that I'm inspired by is the actor Michael J. Fox. And everyone knows him from Back to the Future, Teen Wolf, those those great 80s movies. And he has Parkinson's disease. Now, for a long time, no one knew it because 
he kept it kind of hidden. But if you notice in all of his movies, he kept his hands in his pockets because his hands were shaking a lot. And this was just part of the character that he played in the movies, which no one really knew about. So this idea that you're saying of not letting your limitations define you, Kevin, I really respect that. And I love that about you, which is why I want to talk to you more about what you're doing with your audience. My next question to you is, how do you thrive while living with a disability? You know, Adrian, a lot of people have asked me uh, uh, why, uh, if I consider myself to be an inspiring person. And I always tell, tell them that I'm simply living my life. And, and living my life to me means uh, maximizing my fullest potential and not uh, creating um, uh, an avenue or a space where I can artificially uh, surrender to whatever is, at the time being, my drawback or a contraction to progress. So to answer your question directly, defining success for me simply means that I uh, propel myself towards my maximum level of prosperity. You know, I always tell people it may not always look aesthetically pleasing, but as long as it's effectively executed, then I that's a win for me because, you know, I always say that everyone's yeah, portrait that. of success is different. And uh, the worst thing that any of us can do, Adrian, in my opinion, is set up uh, some artificial a sort of benchmarks of success or waiting uh, to get the approval of other people. You know, I tell people the only standard of expectations you have to reach on your own. Now, it's important to have mentors and those that influence your life. But at the end of the day, for me, Adrian, it's about setting a standard of expectation, expectations that are um, achievable in my own mind and making sure that uh, the expectations that I set and the bar that I set is only uh, met by my own expectations and not influenced by other people. Well said. Very powerfully said. And I like how you said too, Kevin, about everyone has their own portrait of success. That was beautiful. And this expectation that you set in your mind and you don't let anyone else set it for you is powerful because that allows you to have a vision of what you're wanting to achieve. And you just inspired me because I had a conversation the other day with someone and I walked out of the conversation not feeling as inspired because I forgot about what my expectation was for myself in the midst of that conversation. And I think this is something that we all tend to do. We screw up. you know. We, we allow other things and people and environments to dictate to us what we think they, they or it wants us to be. And that's not how we should live. And I love that you're putting this message out there. Kevin, what are some things that you did to get beyond the barriers or even judgments of being disabled? You know, when people ask me this question, Adrian, I go back to uh, my nine-year-old self. You know, it was 1998, buddy. I had just uh, come back from uh, London, Ontario, and at uh, Times Valley uh, Children's Hospital where all of my operations were performed. And I remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, the, the surgeon who uh, performed all of my surgeries, but his name was Dr. Uh, Tim Carey. And before my parents and I left the hospital for the final time, uh, Dr. Carey had uh, put myself and my parents in a conference room and he looked at my parents, and I was nine years old at the time, and he said, we had, we've we done everything medically uh, that we can do for your son. And he, can't, uh, he won't be able to uh, walk without assistance for the rest of his life. You know, and the next, you know, I had to process that. And the next day, I had to go back to school. And I met with the principal at the time, her doctor. Her name was Doctor. Uh, her name was Doctor uh, Carol Cruley, and uh, Doctor Cruley had assembled everyone that was in charge of my file at the time, from therapists to social workers to teachers. Uh, and I had gone through uh, the spiel about what the doctor had told my parents, and uh, 
she had already knew that because she knew that I, I was away from school because I had to go to London. But once I had uh, finished telling the story, it was a bit of a cathartic experience for me. And when I was done, uh, Dr. Cooley looked me in the eye and told me the only uh, uh, limitations in life are the artificial ones that mm. you're going to place on yourself. And, you know, uh, I really think that was the life changing or, or life altering moment that really put me on the uh, current life trajectory that I'm on today. Well said story. And this fact that you were impacted at the age of nine by a doctor. And this is just comes to show how we always have that support if we really, if we really open our eyes and we really open our hearts and see that. And I love the fact that the doctor told you that because there's this been cases I've heard stories where sometimes physicians or even other people may not be so supportive and they're more of a, a melancholy approach of saying, well, you can't do this. But I love how that doctor inspired you to say that your limitation is going to be you and you have to move beyond that. So this idea of, of working beyond limitations is really hitting home to me because I can think about so many times in my life, Kevin, where I have been disabled in my thinking about myself. And this is where I want us to also think about this is, you know, disability of believing in ourselves and, and moving beyond what we think is a restriction. You have a purpose, which is why I really was intrigued by you. And your purpose is challenging others to reach their fullest potential by maximizing their productivity in life, work and play. That's what your message is in your motivational speaking. And your greatest thrill doesn't come through personal achievement or accolades, Kevin. And I, I read this about you. It comes from the success and enthusiasm of people you touch along the way. Who have you touched along the way? Have, have, do you remember any stories or situations where someone came to you and they said, hey, you really touched my heart. You changed my life with who you are and, and what you're doing. You know, for me, um, I have a lot of people that I respect and that I have hopefully um, shown a different way of, of living life. You know, as part of uh, hosting my own podcast, it, you know, I'm always uh, connected with people who are inspirational. And, and you know, I uh, think of this one per person that I had a chance to interview. His name was uh, Dallin Reber. Uh, Dallin played college baseball uh, at BYU, and he was uh, scheduled to play professional baseball, but then uh, he suffered an injury and had to uh, derail his baseball career. And then uh, he, he went into sort of uh, a personal development and, and uh, mastering yourself, mastering. And one of the things that Dallin uh, said to me is that the only regret after uh, talking to me on my own podcast and then eventually talking to him on his was he wished that he had met me sooner because he said that uh, part of uh, being friends and associated with me uh, helps him change his perspective on uh, how to better include people. So, you know, that that to me is why I do the work that I do to help change the conversation and educate people on the positive benefits of mm -hmm. both inclusion, diversity, and really uh, uh, the diversity of perspective and the, po the power that lies within that, for sure. I love that, the diversity of perspective and the power that lies within that. And the fact that you touch this person's life and seeing something from a different point of view is what it's all about. It's seeing things from the other perspective. And that's what you're living your life as, Kevin, which is what I really appreciate about you. Now, you're doing some major work here. And it's not just, just speaking to people, but you're actually changing the concept here of the workplace area. And you're achieving equity and equality for individuals with disabilities in the workplace. Where does that start? 
Like when you're looking at changing that, what is one of the first steps that you're looking at doing, Kevin, or looking to help with? Yeah, you know, when it comes to education, uh, education on unemployment equality, Adrian, it starts with uh, a better understanding and grasp of the benefits of hiring people with disabilities and further educating employers about, you know, the positive benefits and uh, the uh, advantages that uh, hiring someone with a disability uh, w- would bring to your organization. You know, it's all about a matter of perspective and how you look at uh, um, the hiring process. You know, I always uh, tell employers that hiring someone with a disability is an opportunity that uh, sees the opportunity to advance your business. You know, people with disabilities are an untapped market, Adrian, of our workforce. They often yeah. can help us find different ways to uh, solve problems, come up with solutions. Mm-hmm. And oftentimes, they can help us minimize um, our training cost of new employees because they're so uh, eager and want, want to prove that they can do the work. You know, here in Canada, uh, our federal government did a study that said that only uh, 59% of working-aged adults with a disability are currently employed compared to 80% hmm. of their non-disabled counterparts. And, That's you know, it all... It always starts with, you know, you know I, I tell people that talent is an equally distributable uh, commodity, but the access to opportunity isn't. So how do you change that? You change that by educating employers. You change that by having inclusive conversations about what they can bring to a business. You change it by uh, creating internships for of mm. folks with disabilities uh, when, when they graduate college. And then you work on both a federal, uh, in my case, it would be provincial, but in your case, it would be state or local level uh, to work with those in power at the government level to, to give incentives to businesses to hire people with disabilities. And then you really change the conversation, but it always starts with education and, and then access to opportunity as well. I love that. It starts with education and access to opportunity. And you gave so many gold nuggets there in that conversation, which is powerful, which is why I love what you're doing is why you're so effective because you're so knowledgeable about the field. And when you're saying there's this discrepancy between the 80% and I believe the 40% of the disabled and the people who are, who, who are not showing up in these, these stats, versus the 80% who are able and who are not, who are showing in the stats, there is a huge gap that we need to work on closing. And this is part of the process of the education that you're talking about, which I'm, I'm very intrigued by. With your presentations, do you ever find resistance from businesses or any type of corporation? Do they come up with excuses saying, well, we've tried this before and this doesn't work or it can't work? Do you face any of those barriers when you're trying to present this idea to them? Yeah, you know, the barriers that you face are really attitudinal and really shifting the mindset. You know, I always I always uh, say that you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. We've all heard that, that analogy before, but, you know, when you're a person with a disability, you can put out 500 app applications and only... You're back from 10 people, for example. And, yeah. you know, you know it's, and that's ridiculous. It's, that needs to change. Uh, it's about changing the perception of the abil- abilities of other people. You know, mm-hmm. just as an, as an example, the U.S. Supreme Court is, is taking up affirmative action at, at the moment. And, and, you know, you look at what Justice Clarice said. Uh, Clarence Thomas said, he said, he does, he's heard the word diversity, but he doesn't know what that means. Well, let me help the justice out in defining <laughs> diversity. Diversity to me, Adrian, means that we look beyond the perceived 
potential or capability of someone, and then when you look at them for the uh, the uh, external uh, attributes that they can bring to a situation. Now, education and opportunity, as I've already uh, mentioned, is a, a disparity for sure. But mm -hmm. I also think it, it's important to look at the uh, merit and makeup of a person when we're talking about diversity, because diversity of perspective comes in all uh, different forms and fashions, you know. Yes. You and I are having this conversation today, and Adrian, I, I've only spent about 10 minutes with you, but I can already uh, see that you're dedicated to uh, move, moving the needle of progress forward. You know, I always yeah. ask the so, guest, yeah. and I, yeah, I, I already, I, I always rather ask the guest that I interview what a what is your mission to move the needle of progress forward? And when we talk about uh, employment equality, moving the needle of progress forward starts with actually having a needle to move. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and it starts by uh, changing the, uh, the attitudinal uh, roadblocks, for, the, uh, for a lack of a better term, that employers and business people uh, uh, typically have. And it, it starts with education, awareness, and opportunity. That's amazing. Yeah, and you're right. It's about moving the needle, and we need to have a needle to move first. When it comes to education, Kevin, is there resources that people can go to in order to learn more about inclusion or working with people who have disabilities or is, is there any resources that you have gone through that have allowed you to understand it better so that you can help others you know uh, a lot of people don't know this as employers but there are actually organizations that um, specialize in employing uh, folks with disabilities uh, mm -hmm. and they they get paid by the government to do of what uh, we're talking about to employ people with disabilities. So the, the, there's research, uh, there's resources available from your local, state, and uh, federal government in terms of employment resources. It all starts with a little bit of research on the, on the uh, back of employers. But I will tell you that here in Ontario, I used to serve as an uh, ambassador for. Uh, project called the Discoverability Network. And what it is is an online job matching portal uh, for folks with disabilities and employers to get connected to. It's very cool. You go on this website and you can self-identify as to having a disability. And uh, if you're someone with a disability who wants to work, you're matching with employers who want to hire you. So it's pretty cool. And obviously, if you're an employer, it works the opposite way. But to answer your uh, question, yes, there are resources, and it's incumbent upon all of us uh, to sort of have these conversations to um, bring them to the forefront. But there are government and non-governmental resources that every employer uh, can access, uh, and most of these government services are free to the employer. and. Oftentimes, uh, these aid agencies work at no cost to the employer uh, to better uh, employ folks with disabilities as well. Excellent. It's good to have those resources because I, one of the things that we tend to, I'm going to say this, mess up on when it comes to following up with things as a human race is that we say, oh, yeah, I'm going to look into that. And people fail to do that because they never look into it. They never do the research. They never go to the resources and to take the extra step. So the challenge today for everyone, including myself, is to look up some of these things that Kevin talked about and to do some more research. If you're running a business or you work for an organization or if you know anyone who possibly is disabled, help them out. Share the resource. Share them to Kevin. Kevin has a podcast. You know, Let's have a conversation. Direct them there. 
Kevin's going to have some information to them I'm going to put into the show notes of this podcast. You'll be able to connect with Kevin and follow him and see what else he's doing to help to improve lives of others. Kevin, for a person that is disabled, who has had a big struggle with getting into a company or to some type of avenue that they're wanting to get into, what is something that you could share with them today, a first step that they need to take to maybe make some changes or get the ball rolling a different way for them? Well, you know, first of all, um, for anyone struggling to find employment, the first thing you have to do. They are, yeah. Yeah. The first <laughs> thing you have to do is define your purpose. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by defining your purpose is what problem are you solving as an individual? Uh, or what is your passion and purpose in life? Mm. And once you answer those questions, then you can propel yourself to greater heights. I'll give you an example. Um, the week uh, before uh, everything uh, shut down for COVID, I was about to sign a contract to return to the Discoverability Network. And then my boss called me and said, you did such a good job the first time and wanted to give you a second contract, but unfortunately COVID has hit. And I had just left the YMCA because I thought I was going back to work for the Ontario Chamber. And then a week before I was supposed to sign my contract, my contract got suspended. And a couple of months later, or um, in fact, um, uh, I had left the uh, YMCA in December, and by May, I had started a new podcast. And the podcast that I'm working on now was directly uh, started because, you know, I didn't have work, so I wanted to stay relevant. So I created a podcast to uh, have these authentic conversations, which, again, move the needle of progress forward. So I... I think, you know, Adrian, the uh, long and short answer to your question is you have to be the author of your own destiny. And when That's you right. when you have a disability, the worst thing you can do when it comes to employment uh, in a, you know, uh, in is, is, is make yourself out to be the victim because People with disabilities have to work a thousand times harder than their non-disabled counterparts. Mm -hmm. Is it frustrating not to work? Absolutely. But, you know, life is all about uh, opportunities that are behind doors. When something closes, another opportunity opens. And it's an opportunity to reinvent yourself. So my, my message to those people that are struggling, because I've been there too, too, is Make sure that you know what your purpose is and how you want to rewrite the narrative of your own story. Wow. Know what your purpose is and know how you want to rewrite the narrative of your own story. Kevin, you are dropping some gems, my friend, and I am, I'm just getting goosebumps right here listening to you because you're definitely hitting home to what my language and what I truly believe in. And I like how you said too, not to play the victim. And I know this is hard because all of us have played the victim, including myself. We throw that card out there when we feel like things are not in our favor and we make all these accusations and excuses for what we're not getting. And when reality is, like you were saying, creating the purpose, having the passion and rewriting that story and putting the vision out there and going into action with it. Kevin, this is amazing, this conversation we've been having, and I can see why you're creating such an impact across the planet and in your community. And to me, you hats off, brother, you know, two thumbs up. You have my respect because I really appreciate who you are as an individual. But I want to shift gears here just for a little bit because I know your other passions and one is sports commentary. And I got to ask you here, are you following the football season right now, the NFL? Uh, yeah, you know, Andrew, sadly, <laughs> I am a fan of the worst football team in the league right now, the Detroit Lions, who couldn't stop butter from running off a knife on defense, buddy. I, 
<laughs> you know, I've, I've uh, learned to uh, remove emotion from uh, my football Sundays anymore when I watch Lions football because <laughs> I've learned it's not good for my blood pressure. So to answer your question, yes, I'm a long-suffering Detroit Lions fan and uh, for the, uh, you know, there's a running joke on sports radio around these parts. You know, the Ford family has owned the football team since 1964. And the, the running joke around here is that we've been rebuilding the team since 1964. And, uh, you know, our owner came out, uh, I think it was last week, and said, everyone has to be patient. And, you know, there's only uh, so much patience that I can put in the hourglass before I get to a state of empathy or empathy. So, you know, I'm not empathetic for the Lions anymore. I'm just a long-suffering fan that's in an endless rebuild. So thank you for uh, stirring my <laughs> passions and elevating my blood pressure this afternoon. It's most appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I had I had to bring that up because I know that there's more to you. And this is what it's important is to find out, you know, who else, you know, what other things are you passionate about? Because this is what drives also you. If we're not passionate about other things, then how can we put passion into other things for, for people? And you talk about the Detroit Lions here. I want to just quickly say this, not to get your blood pressure up. We don't want to do that. But I grew up a Detroit Lions fan myself and my favorite running back of all time. I got to say this. And, and he is the GOAT. And no one can tell me any different. Barry Sanders, number 20. That's my guy. Well, I'll tell you, Adrian, I went to the Lions game of this past Sunday against uh, Miami, and he was the um, a guest of honor and the honorary captain, and they announced, Adrian, that uh, they're going to be building a statue outside of uh, Ford Field of Barry Sa Sanders the last time. The alliance held an irrelevancy. He was on the team, but uh, the the two best players that, that they've ever had in franchise history retired early because they couldn't take the losing anymore. So that should tell you something. But mm -hmm. you know, as long suffering Lions fans, you know we've always adopted the phrase "There's always next year," right? Yeah, <laughs> there's always next year, and. I grew up watching him and I just watched some highlight reels of him the other day, which is very interesting how things kind of come back full circle that we're talking about the Lions. But his mannerisms, his character, his ability to be able to just be a kind, loving person, it was just so phenomenal, which is why I really didn't like the fact that he had to retire so early. But let's be honest. The Lions, you know, they were not going to trade him. He was like their their legend. And so he, like you said, got tired of losing. He wanted to be on a different team where he could have an opportunity. But I thank Barry for the years he served the Lions because it really gave me something to grow up as a child watching. Now, to quickly go back to one of my passions is football as well. And obviously, I'm a Seahawks fan because I'm in Seattle. But my favorite quarterback, Russell Wilson, is now in Denver. And I got to say this to the audience today. To just show Russell Wilson some love, people have been dropping him down so much of, with being with the Denver Broncos, and he's not performing well. And here's the thing: when you go to a different team, it's a different energy. You got a different coach, you got different people, the environment's different. It's going to take a minute. It's going to take a minute. So that's just the only thing I got to say: give them some time, give him some time to adapt, give the team some time to adapt. A couple of years from now, he'll be performing the same way he did in Seattle. So that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Leave well, Russell alone. <laughs> yeah, just before we move on, Adrian, you've resurrected the career of Geno Smith. Or, uh, they're leading the division there in Seattle. And, uh, Gino's doing I good. Think, Proud of him. You know, when you, when you talk about o overcoming obstacles, and certainly Geno Smith has uh, overcome a lot of obstacles in his own career, and uh, he's got Seattle in the playoff hunt. And I, I have to tell you, uh, we've been talking about uh, diversity and overcoming obstacles. I have to tell you, as, yeah. as, as a Lions fan, and if you can get through a, a season of Detroit Lions football, that should give you the Presidential Medal of Freedom after watching all of that uh, uh, subpar football. But 
But that's here nor there, and now we can move on because I got that off my chest. So, <laughs> go ahead. You know, we, we have to do this again because we got so many great conversations, and definitely I got to come up there and see you, brother, and we have some coffee and chat it up and, and just have and have a genuine conversation about sports, about life, and this thing of, like you said, football, what we're talking about here, our listeners, we didn't digress. This is part of the conversation. This is part of being human. We have things that we do, but we also have things that we are a part of. And football is something that Kevin and I share together when it comes to one of our, our passions. And like you said with Geno Smith, Geno has really overcome a lot of the obstacles. People waved him away. They said he was done. He was only second, third stream quarterback. But now they're saying, oh, Geno, I didn't know he was like that. He wasn't like that when I had him. Well, he had time to mature. He went through the, the phases of life called mentorship. You know, he's with Russell for a couple of years. He learned and he watched. He gathered. This is what we have to do. We have to learn and, and watch. And he, he also suffered through being a New York Jets quarterback as well. That's so that, right. He that did. Must, that mm-hmm. must count for something, right? That does count for something. And this ties back to what we were talking about today. The human journey the human changes and challenges that we all go through, I call it the human mess. There is purpose that comes out of that at some point. If you're focused, you have a vision and you know what you want and you don't make excuses for yourself. Kevin, you have not made any excuses for yourself. You're giving reasons for other people with disabilities and people in life in general to move on and to create purpose with action. I have one last question for you, Kevin. What does living a purposeful life mean to you? You know, um, I am I'm going to, uh, to tell you a story about um, one of the person, one of the people that I have had the good fortune of interviewing. Uh, I'm good friends with a local uh, uh, sports producer here in uh, Detroit. His name's Jake Reitma. And Jake lives his life by uh, one saying that, that he, he says, go, go mad all the time. And what go mad stands for, it stands for go make a difference. So, you know, um, okay. you know, making a difference in the lives of other people is how I define living a purposeful life. You know, and, and I always say that inclusion is the gateway to independence. So if I can open up more doors of I like inclusion that. for people to uh, gain their personal and professional independence, brother, that's what I'm all about. I love it. You said it well, brother. And this is why you are who you are today. And I'm happy to have you and share this moment, time, space, and energy with you. Kevin, is there a resource that people can go to to find out more about what you're doing and what your next projects are? even your podcast. Yeah, and for anybody who wants to know more about my story and where I come from and how I got to where I am today, they can just visit uh, coverbyshare.com, all the information you need to know about myself and my uh, podcast and my other endeavors are uh, on that website. They can also uh, visit uh, the podcast YouTube channel, uh, which is uh, Let's Have This Conversation and you just I've been my name after that, and all my stuff comes up. But Adrian, it was uh, delightful to engage in conversation with your body, and hopefully, we've inspired some other people to move the needle of progress forward. Huh? I believe we did, my friend, and I think we did a lot of a good service to people today. And I'll make sure, Kevin, that your information is in the show notes of this podcast, so that the audience and listeners can connect with you and learn more about what you're doing. And Kevin, congratulations, my friend. You are making change happen in your communities and the planet. And we are grateful for that. Well, once again, thank you for your uh, gracious invitation to engage in conversation uh, today, buddy. You've done an outstanding job with the work that you've done to help people live a, a more purposeful life. And I'm Truly honored to share my uh, expertise, energy, and enthusiasm for living life and making a difference. But it's great to be with you uh, today, and thanks again for the invitation, okay? 
You're welcome. And thank you. Thank you for listening to Your Purposeful Life today. And I'm your host, Adrian Starks. Download this podcast on any platform of your choice by going to our website, yourpurposeful.life. Join me on my social media channels and be a part of the Your Purposeful Life community. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit that like button with a purpose. Let's help you shape your purpose your way.